Man has learned and devised methods to harness the nature. He has progressed from a nomadic aborigin to the modern man. During this journey, he understood the importance of plants and animals. In his quest for economic development, he developed agriculture, animal husbandry, fishery, poultry, etc. He thus understood the economic importance of animals. One of the greatest discoveries was that of silk from silkworm. Let us study in detail how silk is produced. Production of silk fiber is known as sericulture. The discovery that a small insect's larva produces a thin fiber which can be used for producing textiles revolutionized the economic use of the insects. Sericulture involves growing mulberry trees, collection of eggs, rearing of caterpillars, production of cocoons and finally making raw silk fiber. The silk production started in China around 2600 BC. This process was kept by the Chinese for a long time. Somehow the knowledge of making silk has come to India and soon it became a cottage industry. The industry provides a lot of employment and the silk made in India is in great demand world over. Japan and China occupy the first and second places in the production of silk and India occupies the third place in silk production. In India, Kanjivaram or Kanchi silk is famous for its quality and longevity. The characters of silk are, the fibers are strong, light in weight and bright in color. As the silk preserves heat very well, they are used for making daily wear. Silk thread is also used in medicine such as suturing wounds and during surgical operations. In aviation industry, silk is used for making parachutes, balloons, etc. As there is a high demand for silk, Government of India established Central Silk Board. Central Silk Board helps the silk farmers in many ways to improve the quality and quantity of silk production and minimizing the losses during production. In our country, Karnataka takes the first place in silk productions. Anantapur, Vishakapatnam are major places where silk is produced in our state. The silk is produced by the silk glands of an insect named Bombyx mori. The three interesting aspects of silkworms are number one, silkworms are not worms, but they are the caterpillar larvae of the silk moth called Bombyx mori. Moths look like butterflies, but the wings of the moths are horizontal, whereas the wings of butterflies are vertical. Number two, the silk producing glands are modified salivary glands. And number three, as silk moths are domesticated intensely, the silk moths cannot live on their own and cannot be seen in nature. Neither they feed nor they fly away. These flies just reproduce, that is, they lay eggs and die. There are four varieties of silk. One, mulberry, which is a normal silk. Two, taser. Three, airy. And four, muya silk. The second, third and fourth varieties are not so popular and the quality of silk produced from these varieties is not as good as the first one. All the four varieties of silk are produced by different types of silk moths. Let us now examine how silk is produced. Each adult silk moth lays about 300 to 500 eggs on the leaves of mulberry plants. The silk farmer collects these eggs. The eggs are heated with dilute acid for a short while and spread on sheets of paper. 
These eggs are transferred to specially constructed rooms. The eggs develop into caterpillar larvae. The caterpillars are allowed to feed on mulberry leaves for about a month. They eat voraciously and grow in size. The larvae develop a tough covering over it which interferes in the elongation of body during growth. The caterpillars then make a hole in the covering and come out. After coming out, it feeds on mulberry leaves and develops a new covering around itself. This process is known as molting. For the growth to be completed, it undergoes molting four times. After the completion of growth period, the larva stops feeding and starts spinning a silk covering around the body. This is called cocoon formation. This stage is known as pupil stage. Silk is a fibrous protein material known as fibron. Fibron is secreted from the silk glands which are modified salivary glands. In about 48 hours the cocoon formation gets completed. The larvae that are inside the cocoon as you have seen in the last image starts metamorphosis to become into a moth. When the moth develops fully it breaks open the cocoon and comes out. The lifespan of moth is about one week. In this one week it neither feeds nor flies away. The only thing it does is laying eggs and after that it dies. The cocoon in the pupil stage is the best stage to obtain silk thread. If the worm is not killed before metamorphosis, the pupa metamorphoses into an adult moth and breaks open the silk cocoon and comes out. The silk fiber is broken and is of no use and cannot be used to make silk thread. The silk is prepared from the cocoon. The fully grown up cocoons are transferred to boiling water for a short time to kill the worm inside the cocoon. The cocoons are dried and sold in the market or sent to the reeling units for making silk thread. There are many varieties of silk worms. Some give only one crop in a year, some two or more crops in a year. The larvae are prone to diseases by virus, bacteria, fungus and by a protozoan called pebrine. They are also caused by an insect called uzi fly. Nylon nets are used to cover the rooms protecting silk worm culture room from the uzi fly. Tasa silk comes from a silk worm called Antheria pamphia. Tesa silk worms are common in the forest region of Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal. Rearing of these worms is done by the tribal people in traditional ways and the process is done completely outdoors. Munga silk is formed by the silk worm Theophila religiosia. Even in this case the worm is allowed to feed on the trees itself. After the last molt, the worms are transferred to chambers where they form into cocoons. In this process, after the cocoons are fully formed, they are transferred to hot boiling alkaline solution to kill the worm and the silk is woven and made into reels. Dear students, sericulture is a booming perennial industry. Now you know how the silk thread used for making cloths for saris, dresses, shirts, ties, chunnis, scarves, etc. is made. A small moth and such a wonderful economic importance. Living organisms reproduce for propagation. Different organisms have different modes of fertilization. Entire agriculture depends on pollination essential for fertilization and seed formation and propagation of the plants. Here comes the role of animals. Pollination can take place by various methods. Insects play an important role in pollination of various plants. 
plants make elaborate arrangements to attract insects that pollinate their flowers. We shall examine some examples. Flowers have bright colors, sweet smell and secrete nectar. Flowers of some plants emit foul smell like that of rotten meat. Flies and insects which feed on rotten stuff mistake these flowers as source of food and visit them, thus helping the plants to pollinate. The flowers that open during daytime will have bright colors with no smell, while those open in the nights will have dull colors and sweet smell. The nocturnal insects visit the flowers that blossom in the nights. Some birds also help the plants in pollination when they visit the plants for nectar. How do the insects aid in pollination? When an insect sits on a flower to suck nectar, its body comes in contact with the anthers. The pollen sticks to the insect body and when this insect sits on another flower, the pollen which is already present on the insect is released onto the stigma of that flower. One of the most helpful insect that helps in cross-pollination is honey bee. The use of pesticides by farmers kills both harmful and useful insects. This results in reduced cross-pollination and lower yield. Hence, pesticides must be used judiciously in required quantities only. Now we shall study the life history and benefits honey bee accrues to mankind. Man has been benefited from honey bees since the beginning of history. Honey produced by honey bees has a lot of uses. One, it is a substitute for sugar and it is used as a medicine in Ayurveda. Apart from honey produced by honey bees, wax produced by honey bees is another product that has many uses such as in the production of cosmetics, shoes, polish, candles and also in the leather industry. Rheumatism which is a disease of joints is also cured by the venom of honey bees. There are two important varieties of honey bees which are seen in India. Honey bees belong to the genus Apis. The two important varieties are rock bee, Apis dorsata and Indian honey bee, Apis indica. The rock bee is a wild bee and very aggressive in its nature. This bee cannot be domesticated. About 25 to 100 kgs of honey can be collected from a single hive of rock bee. The Indian honey bee is also wild and gives an yield of 2.5 to 4 kgs of honey. Another species of honey bee, Apis mellifera, is being domesticated in India. Honey bees are social insects. They live in group or colonies which are called as beehives. There is a clear cut division of labor among the members of the colony. Each colony consists one queen bee, few male bees about two to three hundred called drones, several thousands of worker bees about twenty thousand to thirty thousand. Beekeeping is known as apiculture. Apiculture is also popular among farmers. In the process of apiculture, special boxes are made for bees to build their hives. A queen bee and few worker bees are transferred to these boxes. The only work of queen bee is to lay eggs. The worker bees go round and collect nectar from various flowers and make honey and also protect the bee hive. The worker bees build a hive on the special frames present in the box. Slowly the honey gets collected in the hives. The frames are taken out and the collected honey is extracted. There is a possibility of diseases in this cultivated hive. A wax moth attacks and feeds on the hive's wax 
and destroys the cells of the hive. Lac is secreted by an insect known as Lacifer lac. This insect feeds on the plants of Asia, bird people, etc. The insect secretes lac on the tree trunk. This secretion is scrapped from the tree trunks and processed in two phases. On the first phase, lac is dried, crushed to powder, sieved and washed. Then in the second phase, it is melted and filtered while it is still hot. India, China, Myanmar, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Thailand are the major countries that produce lac. Though the use of lac is found from the Vedic period, the commercial use of lac as a dye started from 17th century. As there are many other dye which are cheaper, the use of lac as dye has diminished. Lac can be used in the production of paints, toys, bangles, jewelry, waterproof ink, painting ink, nail polish and confectionery and gramophone records. The tribal people of Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan cultivate lac in India. As very little investment is required to cultivate lac, lac production has become a cottage industry and it contributes about 70% of world's lac requirements. the insects we use lot of chemicals which are known as insecticides or pesticides. DDT is one chemical that contains insecticide quality. Controlling insects with the help of such chemicals is known as chemical control method. There are great advantages of chemical control methods. Cost of application is low. It can be easily handled and applied to a crop by spraying. Hence, this method of pest and insect control was widely used with great success in the beginning. But now, it is observed that chemical control methods possess more problems than benefits. The dangers of chemical control method are being realized and efforts are being made to study the methods of natural control of pests and insects. Hence, the emergence of biological methods of control has come to existence. Some insects and pests that cause diseases will have some natural enemies. These enemies will act on those insects and pests only but not harm other animals or plants. These are natural biological methods of control of insects and pests. We shall now see some of these methods. Parasites are the animals that attack the pests and kill them. Parasite enters the pest and takes control of the normal functions of the pest and kills it slowly. Some parasites suck the blood of the pest. To control pests, protozoans, insects and worms are used as parasites. For example, caterpillars are controlled by the use of tachmid flies. Those animals that eat other animals are known as predators. The predators may be birds, frogs, lizards, mammals or even they may be insects. Fishes are used as predators to kill insect larvae which live in water such as larvae and pupa of mosquitoes. When the female insects are sexually mature and ready for mating, it releases some specific compounds into air which are known as pheromones. Pheromone releases by insects are specific. The males understand the smell of pheromones and gets attracted towards the female insects. That means the pheromones released by a female insect may attract several male insects. This phenomenon is used to control the pests. A small amount of pheromone is kept in an insect trap which attract a number of particular insects, thus trapped insects are killed later. The pests are collected and exposed to powerful x-rays 
to destroy the reproductive system. Thus, they cannot reproduce infinitely. This process of biological control is known as sterilization. There are chemicals produced by plants and other organisms which kill the pests. For example, neem plant contains compounds that can arrest damaging activities of several insects. Some compound produced by some plants affect the process of molting of the larvae or the metamorphosis of the larvae to adult insect. Thus, the development of insects is arrested and cannot propagate the species. If proper care is taken, biological control methods can be successfully employed to eradicate harmful pests and insects. We have examined the economic importance of animals in the lessons on sericulture and pollination. There are some more animals which are not domesticated but are of economic importance. Some marine protozoans belonging to foraminifera and radiolaria contain carbonate or silica in their skeleton. The dead skeleton of these protozoans collect at the bottom of the sea and form oceanic ooze. Slowly this ooze solidifies into a strong rock-like structure. The ooze is used as building construction material. The pyramids of Egypt were built with this ooze. The ooze is also used in grinding and polishing tools. Sponges are a group of animals which are usually seen in the seas. Their skeletons are made up of tiny structures called spicules which are made up of calcium carbonate, silica and sponging fibers. Since ancient times, sponges are used for bathing purposes. Today, synthetic sponges have replaced the ancient bath sponges. Skeletons of protozoans and sponges form rock-like structures. As the animal dies, the skeleton sinks to the bottom of the sea. As time progresses, new skeletons are added and they also solidify to form a rock-like structure which forms a barrier in the sea. Have you seen a snail? The body of some mollusk is covered by a shell made of calcium carbonate. The shells are used as coins in some tribes. The soft body of snails oysters is used as food. The pearl oyster is called as bivalve. They are generally found at the bottom of the marine water. They can also be found in fresh water. These bivalves are commercially useful as natural pearls are formed in them. To collect pearls, one has to search the sea bottom and collect the bivalves. Not all oysters have pearls. But to obtain a pearl, one has to force open the shell and you may or may not find a pearl. In both cases, the animal dies. In order to produce pearls, they are being cultured. How is a pearl formed? When small animals or sand particles enters the shell chamber, it causes irritation. Concentrated calcium carbonate is deposited around the particle and this hardens to form a pearl. How are pearls cultured? A number of oysters are collected. A tiny foreign object is introduced into the shell chamber by carefully opening the valve without causing any damage to the organism. These oysters are placed in special tanks or ponds of fresh or marine water. After few months, the pearl would have completely formed and they are extracted. These pearls are called cultured pearls. The natural pearls can have irregular shapes. Cultured pearls generally have perfect shape and the sizes can also be predetermined. The pearls cultured or formed naturally in fresh water are small and less lustrous than those formed in marine water. 
Japan stands first in culturing of both natural and cultured pearls. Hyderabad is referred as Pearl City as it is internationally famous for polishing of pearls. Coming back to the mollusk shells, they are used in the making of buttons, toys, jewelry and feed material in poultry. Fish contain a number of vitamins, minerals and compounds called polyunsaturated fatty acids. In fish, the fat content is very less. Fish is being used as a part of human diet. Both mechanical and traditional methods are being adopted in fishing. The use of modern technology has helped in fishing large amount of fish from sea. It also uses modern preservative mechanisms to meet the growing need of fish by man. Due to the modern techniques, the fishes are over exploited. The over exploitation of fish is resulting in reduction in the number of fish both in sea and oceans. In order to see that the population of fish is maintained, a number of methods are being adopted to breed both marine and freshwater fish artificially. This branch of aquaculture is called pisciculture. Have you seen a snake? In India, there are only four types of poisonous snakes. Look at these images. The viper, the cobra, the crate and the sea snake. Rest of the snakes are non-poisonous. Snakes form an important part of our habitat. They eat rats and thus reduce the population of rats which are very harmful to agriculture. Rats also spread a number of diseases to man. Killing of snakes results in increase of rat population and the crops are severely damaged. Snakes are killed out of scare and also for the skin. Protection of snakes is now being done in snake farms. The snake farms in Gyundi, Chennai is a famous farm in India. Venom is collected from the poisonous snake and is sorted under proper conditions. It is used in the preparation of anti-venom. This anti-venom is used to cure snake bite patients. It is also used in preparation of some medicines. Birds play a very important role to our environment. They are the best and major predators of insects which damage the crops. Birds keep the insect population in control. Some people kill the birds for fun or food. This is resulting in extinction of a number of bird species, especially the migratory birds. In India, there are a number of bird sanctuaries. The famous one is in Bharatpur. In Andhra Pradesh, Koleru is a famous bird sanctuary. Mammals are very intimate to man. A number of mammals are being used by man for agricultural operations, to carry loads, to carry people, etc. Some mammals like sheep, cattle, rabbit, etc. are also used as food. Man has domesticated a number of animals as pets. Some of them are also useful for hunting and security. In this unit, we have examined a number of plants and animals which are economically important to man. We have learned the difference between wild and domesticated species, how domestication of plants and animals benefited the humans. We have also learned the various methods of selections. We have seen the economic importance of silkworm, honeybee mollusca, in detail along with many other useful animals. Hope you are well aware of these topics. Meet you in the next module. Until then, keep learning and keep smiling. Bye-bye.